Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. This video is from Signals and Systems, example 4.9, uh, Properties of Continuous Time Fourier Transform. And for this, a student has requested uh, two properties uh, of the uh, Fourier transforms are important. So let's uh, understand. The first is called the linearity property. That means if signal in time domain is xt, then its frequency domain or the Fourier domain representation will be xj omega. And if there is another signal called yt, then its Fourier transform will be capital yj omega. Now, if we add these two signals in the time domain, just shown here, so xt with some multiplication, a or b or c or 2 or 5, etc., plus y multiplied by another constant b, then the transform will be the two transforms multiplied by the same constant that we had with x or y. So this is the linearity property, that is addition and uh, multiplication with constant. Then we come to a time shifting property. Now if uh, there is a signal xt, again its transform will be xj omega. And the signal here we have taken is centered around zero on both sides and the limit is t1 and minus t1. So, if we shift this signal to a point t0, from 0 we have moved to t0, the name of the signal will change. It will become xt minus t0. But some students might get confused about this minus and plus because we are moving towards the positive side. Now, but the sign we are using is negative. So for that, there is, uh, uh, well, I'll explain. Now let's uh, see the example that we'll be solving. The usefulness of Fourier transform, linearity and time shift property. Let us consider the evaluation of the Fourier transform of signal xt. So when we evaluate this signal xt and find its Fourier transform, then we'll understand the properties of linearity and time shift. So the first thing we'll do is, let's say I'm chopping off from here. So this is the bottom part and this is the top part. The amplitude of the top part is from 1 to 1.5, that means uh, actually 0 0.5. So we'll redraw it like this, bring it down 0 to 5, uh, 0.5, and this is 0 to 1. And this point is important. Now here it is around 2.5. And similarly, the other signal is also around 2.5. Okay, so as I mentioned, we have to mark this point, 2.5. This is our T0, or the shifting. Now, if we take a signal and we call it X1T, which has an amplitude one and its spread is from minus half to uh, plus half, then how would we represent this signal? It's not one, it's half of one. So we first of all, we'll say that this signal is half of this xt. So half x1t is our desired signal. And then we have to move this signal so moving it by 2.5, uh, we get the signal half, x1, t minus 2.5. And as uh, I was mentioning, that if there is any confusion, whether we should write t plus 5, 2.5 or minus 2.5,
the best way that you put t minus 2.5 is equal to 0 therefore t is equal to 2.5 that means we have to move to plus 2.5 to get this value or if we move to plus 2.5 then our signal will be t minus 2.5 and similarly the second part just moving it by 2.5 it will be x2 t minus 2.5 now the whole signal we can write it in this form then of this one x1 t minus 2.5 plus this one x2 t minus 2.5 now we'll take the transform so this is uh, where we were to find Fourier transform or to find uh, move into the frequency domain first of all we have to keep in mind that x1 and x2 both are rectangular pulses we saw uh, before that they were rectangular shape and we have solved an example, example 4.4 for the rectangular shape signal. And the transform of this signal was found to be 2 sin omega t1 divided by omega. And t1 is the limit of the spread. Now example 4.4, I have explained it very clearly. I'll give the link also. So those uh, of you who want to learn exactly how did we get this, you must watch example 4.4 first. Okay, so this was our x1t. And from this logic, we will get the transform capital X1 j omega, which should be equal to 2 sine omega t1. Now our t1 is 1 over 2. So omega multiplied by 1 over 2 or omega divided by 2 and divided by omega. So this was without shifting. Now if we shift, there is a shifting property that we discussed earlier that with the transform we have to add a term e raised to the power minus j omega t0 that is the amount shifted. So for half x1 to x1 t minus 2 5, this was our signal. So we'll write half and using this property it will be e g minus j omega 5 by 2 or 2.5. So 2.5 or 5 by 2 same and multiply by x1 j omega and x1 j omega is here so we'll plug in that value so half x1 t2 by will be e minus j omega 5 by 2 uh, and x1 this 2 will get cancelled with this one so it will be simply sine omega 2 over 5 Then coming on to the second part, no change up to this point, same formula. The only thing is that we here also will write in the, the Fourier transform of the signal 2 sine t omega by 2 exactly following this. The only change here is now that t1 is 3 over 2. So omega 3 over 2 and then shifting property this has been shifted by 2.5 or 5 by 2 so we'll use this e minus j omega t so e minus j omega 5 by 2 and this is same as x2 so we have got these two equations this is for the first part and this one is the second part so adding the two will get the complete Fourier transform. So adding the two, this one and this, and then if you want, you can take e raised to the power minus j omega five by two common from both of them. So this will be the final answer. So I hope you have been able to follow this. 
please let me know through your comments share it with your friends thank you